I watch quite a lot of movies um, on different formats and different places. I, I'm, I'm a huge uh, old classic movies from the 40s and stuff. I love old, old movies like that. I'm a sucker for that. I watch anything that's old and black and white. One of my favourites is a Christmas movie called It's a Wonderful Life, which is made in 1949 by, with James Stewart in it. And I like those kind of movies. Casablanca with Humphrey Bogart. Those kind of classic black and white movies. They'll get me every time. If I ever see that when I'm going through, I'll watch that. I don't bother seeing what else. Oh, Casablanca, I've got to see that. Well, there's a lot of films like that. But there's also, as I say, a lot of new films which I think are great too. Um, so yeah, I love movies. I, lo I love movies and I spend a lot of my time when I'm not working um, watching, watching movies, especially these days. You can watch so many different formats and places, platforms where you can watch stuff. <laughs> You got me in my heart away. You got me kind of my nights and days. Oh, I'm floating on the Milky Way. Oh, Carol, nobody's done it before. Oh, baby, you can open the door. Oh, Carol, you can do it some more. Sing, sing. Oh, Carol, you got me in my heart away. You got me kind of my nights and days. Oh, I'm I usually play either a guitar or a piano and um, just hope that some sort of a, an idea just arrives, you know. <clears throat> a lot of times it doesn't, so you kind of force a tune out and then try and work with that. Generally the ones that, um, that are the best are the ones that just you just suddenly playing or you're playing and suddenly you start singing something and you think, well that's good, where'd that come from? They're the best came from nowhere really. I guess it comes from all the songs you've ever heard which filter the suit and then comes out as this other song like in a, in a sausage meat grinder where it comes out and then it comes out as a different thing at the end you know that must be that I don't know but the best ones come like that but it's usually with um, music first the way I start with either guitar or piano singing a, a melody and when I sing a melody usually it's got a few lyrics with it but not maybe all of them or maybe the wrong ones and, um, and then I'll go back to it and if it, if it grabs me as a song when I go back to it and I think, oh, I like this, it's catchy or whatever, then I start to think, okay, what can it be about? And usually the, the lyrics I've already sung maybe gives me a, an idea of what the, the story would be, you know. And then I continue with that and finish the lyrics from there. I love is alive. So we begin. In 1978, we were getting an um, award, Smokey were getting an award for a magazine in Germany called Bravo. We were getting the gold, like a little Indian they gave you. And um, Susie Quattro and her band were in Cologne, where we were getting the award. 
doing an album at EMI Studios. They were doing an album for Susie. And they came to, just to say hello to this award ceremony. And after the ceremony, there was a, like a party, an after show party, and they'd set up a little corner with some amplifiers and drums and everything. And there was a little group, a local group playing. So of course, as the night went on and we all had a few more drinks, people started getting up and jamming with whoever was up there. Everybody, Bonnie Tyler was there, she got up, uh, Leif Garrett, uh, whoever was the, the, the people of the day. And of course, me and Susie got up at some point and we started to sing, I think, Long Tall Sally or some Little Richard song. And um, Mike Chapman was there sitting at a table and when we came off, we went and sat down, had a drink. And he said, you two look great together. You should do, you should do this, you know, we should, we should do something. And I said, well, I don't mind, you know, it makes a change. And Susie went, yeah, fine. So, I, I don't know how, what, she, they were still in the studio anyway. They must have been in for a few weeks. So I went home and then I got a call to come back because he'd written this song called Stumbling In. So I went back and we went in the studio and it was her band all set up already for, because they were recording and I just sat in on, a, on guitar. So I played guitar and the rest of it was her band. And then we just did the vocal on one mic by the way, not, we didn't do it in bits like they do now. I'll do my bit, then you do your bit, and I'll send you it in the post, and you put it into the mix. And No, we just had one microphone, and we both stood at the microphone, and we sang st Stumbling In, and the B-side, which was called Stranger With You. Both of them, just one take. I may say one take, we might have stopped and said, just do that bit again, and gone back a bit. But basically, it was on one microphone, and that's the record that you, that you hear now was just me and her band putting down the track and us singing on one mic and then we, we added some strings a bit later. But that was that's the record. Living Next Door to Alice was a song which we didn't really want to do, to be honest with you, um, the group, because it had already been out about three years earlier or th four years earlier by a group from Australia, were they Australian or New Zealand? I think Australia, called New World. There was this group called New World who'd had a couple of hits about 1972 or three, around that time. Um, they had that... Uh, never promised you a rose garden. Do you remember that one? I beg your pardon. <laughs> and um, there were three of them and they were, they were okay. And they, they were signed to Mickey Mouse label, Rack. And we were signed to Mickey Mouse label later on and Chin and Chapman had a production deal. And Mike Chapman and Nicky and Mike had written that song, Living Next Door to Alice, for New World. So they'd already done it and it wasn't a very good version that they did. And if they ever see this, I'm sorry. But it wasn't. And um, so Mike um, and Nikki did that. And we were in the studio in Los Angeles with Mike. And we were doing an album. And we'd pretty much done most of the album. And he said, what about doing this song? And we said, which? He said, I've got this song. And we said, and he started playing it. We went, well, that, that's that fucking New World song, you know? Yeah, but we can do it different. And if we do it, it could be a big hit in the country market in America, which could break America for you, you know? And we went, yeah, but it's corny, you know, and the New World already did it. And, uh, anyway, he said, but what about the country market? And we went, yeah, you're right about the country market. It could be rigged there, you know. So we did it. We did it. We recorded it. And we recorded a pretty decent version of it, you know. He, he produced it well, and we, it was completely different from the New World version, which had been produced by Mickey, Mickey Mouse. This version was produced by Mike, probably how he had it in his head, you know. So we recorded it and finished it. That was done, but it wasn't going to be on the album and it wasn't going to be released anywhere else except for America's country market. That was it. That was the deal. 
So when we, by the time we got back to England and we were in Rack Records, the office with Mickey, and we went, we were having a meeting, and he said, "We've got the single anyway. We know which single." And we went, "Oh yeah, which one?" And we were thinking one of the others because there was quite a few good songs on the album. He said, "Living Next Door Wireless." We went, "No, no, 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 no. That's not the one." Sally called. She got the word. She said, "I suppose you've heard." Bad Alice. Well, I rushed to the window and I looked outside. I could hardly believe my eyes. The big limousine rolled up to Alice Drive. Well, I don't know why she's leaving or where she's gonna go. I guess she's got her reasons, but I just don't wanna know. Just for 24 years I've been living next door to Alice. 24 years just waiting for a chance to tell her how I feel and maybe get a singing dance. Now I gotta get used to not living next door to Alice. Now, we, you know, it's there and it's a part of the heritage, so you do it and people go, oh, great. But there's still, when I do it, there's always a part of me thinks, mm, <laughs> I don't want to do this. <laughs> but I've kind of grown to like it and um, because people like it. And it's surprising how much better a song sounds when it's a hit and when people love it. It suddenly it takes on its own life and it sounds better than it, it was before. But it wasn't really something we wanted to do. We were wrong as far as sales were concerned. But we might have been right as far as the direction we went in. I was lost, out of time Caught in the eye of the storm I was drowning in the ocean Drifting away from the shore I saw you standing there You were alone in the night As the dark wrapped around you I finally found you And brought you back into the night On the streets of Manhattan Dreams I'd forgotten All came back to me once again In the lights of the city You captured my heart We became lovers and friends Well, Streets of Manhattan came about because I was asked, or we, it was discussed, that I should do a duet with uh, Bonnie Tyler. And um, I know Bonnie Tyler pretty well. We've known each other for years, you know, doing concerts together. And I'm since the 70s, you know, and um, we've always been talking now and again about we should do a duet, you know, and, yeah, we should, and it never happened. <clears throat> and this time it, it was going to be like, okay, let's see, we need some songs. So I said, well, I'll try and write some songs as a duet. And I wrote four songs. Um, one of them, I won't tell you the, the, all of them because they the, 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 they're irrelevant now. One of them was called Battle of the Sexes. Um, two others, and one was called Streets of Manhattan. And the two best ones were Battle of the Sexes and Streets of Manhattan, I thought. So I sent them off to her, and she picked up on Battle of the Sexes, and she thought that would be a great song. And, uh, and then she said to me, would you mind if I asked Rod Stewart to do it with me? <laughs> and I said, I beg your pardon. <laughs> and uh, so I said, what, what, what? Well, that's what it's supposed to be a duet for me. And she said, I know, but imagine how many records we might sell if it's a hit, you know, with Rod Stewart and me. So I was, I was talking to people about it, and they said, why don't you just do it? Well, you know, let her do it. Imagine the amount of money you'll make out of that, you know, and it'll get your name into those places where the other places can't reach, you know what I mean? So I, I said, okay. So she did it. She did it with Rod Stewart. And she'd just been recording an album anyway at the time. And she put that onto her album. Um, so if you look Bonnie Tyler's album around about 2019, you'll find Battle of the Sexes. Man versus woman. 
So anyway, we didn't do the, the thing, and she didn't. So when I came to be doing my songs, I, I came upon the demo of Streets of Manhattan that I'd done for her, for, you know, with me singing all the parts. Because originally, the, the beginning is, I'm lost, out of time, da, 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 da. that was my bit. And then it goes high, ah, da, da, da. and that was her bit. So I ended up singing it all, right, right th from, and doing it on the demo. And then I played it to Mike Chapman, and oh, I love this song. We got to do this, so that's how that came about. The song itself is nothing personal or anything. It's just a, it's a scenario, like a little story about this guy who meets his girl in in New York, and he saw her standing in the street, and he he sort of realizes that they're made for each other, and it's like a a, a romantic film, you know. So that's what it's about. Um, but the main story of it was it was supposed to be a duet with Su with not Susie Quattro, with with Bonnie Tyler. And uh, she didn't pick up on it. She didn't say she didn't like it. She just didn't pick up on it. So I did it instead. The Love Songs album, which we're thinking of calling Rediscovered Love Songs, because that sounds like a good title. Um, and it kind of is that, Rediscovered, because it, it's a collection of love songs that have already been recorded by other people, um, but with my take on them. So it's re-recorded by me, sung by me, and it's a bunch of songs, 12 songs, that um, we've we scoured and got lots of different opinions. Uh, my managers, Ina and John Wagstaff, and people they knew, and fan club people, and people, relatives and stuff, all giving like lists of their favorite love songs, you know. And then just going through them saying, no, that's not really me, that one, well, maybe I could do that one. And then sort of whittling it down to the 12 that I, I feel would be the best for me to sing. And then I went and started to record them and um, I think the, it sounds fantastic, you know. And then I recorded the stuff, a lot of it, um, in my little studio. And then the drums were done in Nashville by a, a, a drummer there. The keyboards, we got, I put keyboards on again in Nashville. Um, got it mixed in Nashville, so it sounds, it's got that kind of real good Nashville mix sound, which, which is hard to replicate here or anywhere else really um, and so there's just a bunch of really good songs on it really great and I think when people see the list of songs that are on there they're going to love them because it's all songs that people go oh I like that song oh I remember that oh I like that and then it's just a case of do they want to hear me sing them with a different slightly different arrangement or what and then if they do it's there it's all there for them when the rain's blowing in your face and the whole world is on your case I could offer you a warm embrace To make you feel my love When evening shadows and the stars appear And there is no one there to dry your tears well, I could hold you for a million years To make you feel my love I know you haven't made your mind up yet But I would never do you wrong I know that from the moment that we down in my mind where we belong I go 
hungry I'd go black and blue There ain't nothing that I wouldn't do Oh, I'd go crawling down the avenue To make you feel my love Well, it's different to, to do songs that have already been done than it is to do songs you've just written because if you've just written a song you've got a completely blank canvas how are you going to record it you know what instruments are you going to use how are you going to start it how, what sort of is any going to be any melody things that go with it any introduction things that go with it so you're starting with nothing just the basic song with a song that's been recorded before there are certain licks or phrases in it which are part of the song you can't leave them out if you leave them out, you lose something of the song. So you've already got a pretty good... It's like copying a painting, really. You've already got a pretty good painting. You're just trying to copy it and maybe change it a bit with your style, you know. So it's a lot easier to do it with, with other people's songs than it is to do from nothing. Although, on the other hand, you can make more mistakes with something else's songs than you can with your own, because nobody would know if you did make a mistake, because it's new. But still, I think it's a bit easier and, it, and, and it's interesting and, and fun, you know, to do songs that you like yourself. That was important to me that I liked them as well, so I could get into them, that I enjoyed doing them, I enjoyed singing them. And there's a light, a certain kind of light that never shone on me. I want my life to be lived with you, lived with you. And there's a way everybody say to do each and every little thing. But what good does it bring if I ain't got you, ain't got you? Somebody to love somebody the way I love you. Okay, this is Chris Norman, um, and if you want to see some of my favorite movies of all time, you can see the list here on Kino Club.